would like to point out my fabulous bracelet. Yes, I know it clashes with the, the blouse, but just don't pay attention to that part because the other colorway didn't fit my little fluffy wrist. So I had to go with the clashy one. But one of the things that is so cool about this particular bracelet, I, it's what I call Diamond Dome, you can kind of see that it has these bumps that come up. So this is actually a peyote bracelet. That's all you're doing is peyote stitch back and forth. Now it is an odd count peyote stitch, so we'll go cover how to do that odd count turn. Uh, I also have a video already on multiple ways that you can do an odd count turn for peyote. So if the one that I show you here in the video today doesn't trick your trigger, then I will pop up a link uh, to the other video that shows you multiple other ways to do the odd count turn. But the other thing that we're doing here is we're using different sizes of seed beads, then that's what's creating this dimensionality. And then also following a pattern. And so uh, I'm going to show you how to do all that because I think this is one of my favorite pieces that I have done. Um, and this is actually an oldie but a goodie. I, th I designed this many years ago, but I still think it's just as relevant today as it was uh, five years ago because three-dimensional stuff is really a big trend in uh, bead weaving these days. So let's take a closer look uh, and I'll show you how we're going to make this. This is the other sample that would not have clashed as much, but on the last was about an inch too short for me. So you'll notice that there's several places in here where we have added beads of different sizes. It's not just this major dome section right here. I also just put a little accent bead right in between the domes. Just it kind of glows in between the two. And then there's also these little triangles on the outside edge that give a, a, a more uh, dimensionality. So trying to figure out where all of those extra little beads go can be a bit of a trick. I've got a super easy way in my instructions to to actually step you through all that. So let's uh, show you how we're going to get started and how to do that funky turn and then I'm going to show you how we're going to do the pattern. So let me move this out of the way. And right here, dun, 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 I have already gotten this started. I, I attached a stopper bead and then I picked up 17 of my size 11 delicas. That's what we're using here is, is the size 11 delicas. And uh, what we're going to do is do peyote back ac across and because this is 17 we're going to have an, that odd little guy on the opposite end here. So all I'm going to do is to start out it's normal. I'm picking up one, I'm skipping one for it to sit on top of and I'm passing through the next one. So when you do that very first one, you get your little T shape going on right here. So a single and two doubles right next to it. Then we're going to just continue that all the way down this strip. So skipping one, passing through the next one. There we go. If you haven't done peyote stitch before, uh, your first row is always the hardest because you don't have much to hold on to here. So use a little perseverance and you will get much, much better at it over time. And then the other thing when you're a new peyote person is to stop periodically and make sure that the pattern that you've got going on here and is a single and a double and a single and a double and that's what you want to be seen. So if you see two singles in a row or two sets of doubles in a row, you know that you did something. Uh, you goof something up and you need to kind of pull back and figure out what you did. So skipping one, passing through the next. Because once you get this first row established, it's all easy. Then it's really easy to tell if you've, you've goofed up. I like to tell the story about when I first started bead weaving, my first experience was a kit make, uh, using peyote stitch and I completely failed learning how to do peyote from it. I just, I was absolutely convinced that I was never ever going to be able to learn how to do peyote stitch and so I avoided it it for the first year that I took classes because I just knew that I couldn't do peyote stitch. When I finally went back and learned from my good set of instructions, turns out I had a bad set of instructions, uh, then I had no problem. But I, I always laugh when I think back to that because most people start out with peyote stitch and for me that was one of the last things I that I learned. Okay, so here I am. I've come across the entire thing, but here I have this one little bead right here and I've got 
I, it needs a bead to sit next to it, but I've got no place to attach it. So what we're going to do actually on this particular project, which is pretty interesting, uh, is we're actually going to pick up the bead that's going to sit right next to it, and then we're going to pass back through this bead in the opposite direction. That's the little guy who's going to sit right next to him. Okay, and we'll probably kind of have to kind of mess with this a little bit, make it flip over. There we go. Like so. Make them sit side by side. And then what we can do is when we flip this back over to go in the opposite direction, I'm just going to continue on the opposite side. Now, you only get to cheat like this once and change which side you're working on. You only get to do that this very first time. The next time we get to the funky end, the funky turn end, you're going to have to do a funky turn that is going to be the same over and over again. But once you've got past the funky turn, then this next whole side here as you peyote across, you're picking up one and it's sitting in that little divot, that little down space and you're passing through the stick next sticky outy bead. And that's why we all love peyote is because we've got those little sticky outy beads for you just to continue to work all the way down here. Okay, so what's going to happen here, get all the way to the end, and actually I'm going to not make you sit here and watch me stitch this because we'll get to the end and that'll be a normal turnaround where we'll just flip it and start being able to work our way back. It's going to be the end with your tail thread that's going to be the funky turn end all the time. So that is a way of helping you remember where the funky turn is. What I'm actually going to do is switch little pieces that I'm working on here because I've already got this one stitched forward. So here I am, you can see this is where my tail is, and here I am and I've got the funky turn. And so let's do the funky turn the way it's actually supposed to be done. So this is the true official way of doing it. We're going to pick up our bead. You're going to pass through the bead that it's going to sit next to towards yourself, plus one more in a diagonal. Okay, so it's going through two beads in a diagonal towards yourself, and it goes off towards the hand that you're holding your beads in, if that helps you. Okay, and we're going to kind of flip him into place. Then you're going to pass up the bead that's sitting right next to the one you're coming out of. I'm coming out of this guy here on my side. I'm going to pass the one right next to him and then back through the one below the bead that we just are adding here. Because what we need to do is come out of that bead but in this direction. So I can't just go here and come out this way because then my, my thread is coming out the wrong side. So instead we have to kind of pull a U-turn. So we're going to go to right below it. Now I can come this direction. I can flip my piece. And now I'm ready to peyote across like a normal piece. Okay, so let me tell you also, it's also important on this particular piece to be able to count your rows. So Counting the outside two columns is going to be your easiest way to count rows. So here I've got one, two, three, four, five. Five rows is what I've done so far. So I'm about to start working on the sixth row. The reason this is important is because I want to show you the actual directions for this. This is what I call the shorthand page. And this will tell you on each row the number of beads that you're adding. So we just did row five with nine delicas. Row six, I'm going to be adding eight of our delicas. Row seven is where now all of a sudden I'm going to start adding in some size 11 seed beads with the delicas. And so this will tell me what order. And then you can see where here it, can, it gets to the point where it's, I'm picking up an eight, an 11, two delicas, an 11, two delicas, an 11, an eight. So this, you have to follow this, these beads in this order, and this is a really easy way for you to keep track of uh, each of these segments as you're doing this. Um, 
so the shorthand page is fabulous, and you might even just want to take, uh, you know, a, 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 a pen or a pencil or something, and check mark off these as you go along. Now you're going to repeat this multiple times uh, on your as you're going along with the pattern, but you could just say, you, you, if you use a pencil, you can erase it or you know work work with it that way. So since I'm on row set, I'm sorry, row. Six. I this one is going to be all delicas all the way across. So let me quick do that. You're still going to have to deal with those funky turns when you get to that tail end. So don't let that be a surprise to you. Even though we're going to start switching up what kind of beads we're using, uh, it doesn't change the fact that we still have to do our funky turn. Let's see here. One of the other things that's really fun about this bracelet is because you are using you're using delicas, size 11s, size 8s, and size 6s, it gives you a lot of opportunities to make some really interesting color choices and make your bracelet look, look very, very different. Okay, so that was the end of row 6. So row 7 tells me that I'm going to pick up a seed bead first and make my stitch with a seed bead. And then I'm going to do seven delicas. It can be very useful if you if you start um, forgetting which row you're on. It can be very useful to pull out the number of beads that are listed in the in that particular row. I do that on some of my more uh, difficult pieces where I'm trying to keep track of a pattern. It's like if I know what's supposed to be on that row and I get to the end of the row and I didn't use all those pieces, then I know that I goofed up somewhere. Okay, oops. There we go. One more Delica. And then here I am on that funky turn edge. So this last space here is where now this seed bead, this last seed bead should go. So this is where I'm going to throw the seed bead in there, but I still have to do the funky turn, which means the seed bead's going to sit right here. I'm going to pass through the one right below where it's going to sit and the one on a diagonal towards the hand that I'm uh, holding the piece in. I'm going to kind of pop that into place. Now I'm going to come right back through the neighbor and back up through the bead that's right below the new one that I'm adding. And now I can pop through that new bead that I just added. So there's my row seven. Now in row eight, it also says I'm going to pick up an 11 and six delicas and an 11. So I'm going to just do like one or two more rows here with you because there's something I want to show you about adding these beads that are different sizes in here. It makes uh, a difference how you let them sit. We have to let them kind of sit upward so that we get that dimensionality and so that they fit into the slots because the truth of the matter is we're fitting beads that we're not meant to, that are too big for those slots in there and that's why they have to pucker upward. Okay, so there's number six of the Delicas and now we're going to pick up an 11 and that's number, the last bead in that piece. Now we're going to flip it. Okay, so here's where I've got all sorts of stuff going on. Row 9, I'm picking up a size 8, a size 11, two Delicas, so one, two, size 11. You can see why I need a chart to keep track of this, right? Although I do have some tips on how to make this easier and I'm going to show that to you in here in a second. Two more Delicas. Because at some point you can actually memorize this, or some people can. Two Delicas, a size 11. And then my last bead, which will be the funky turn bead, is a size 8. So here I am coming through the one that it's going to sit next to. 
I'm going through two on the diagonal towards the hand that's holding my, and actually I'm just going to do this in two stitches. It only wants to catch one of those beads. Let me catch the other one on the diagonal towards the hand that was holding the piece. There we go. Now we're going to go through the bead sitting right next to it, also on the diagonal, away from the bead that we just added. So that size eight. So it's going to be right underneath there. And now I can pop right up through here. Okay, so you're just going to keep adding in this order. What's going to happen is when you start putting the smaller beads on this side again, it's going to force this larger bead up and it's going to sit upward a little bit and it's going to kind of cinch in underneath it. And let me show you in the piece how that happens. So you can kind of see right here where that bead just sits up higher a little bit so that those others can come in and cinch underneath it. And then it gets really dramatic here in the center pieces when you're doing these center ones. So that's the biggest thing to remember is that you don't want to keep, it, people have a tendency to want to flatten their peyote down. Uh, you know, you want it to see it all sitting in a nice flat line. That's the way you're used to seeing it. But when you're working with beads of multiple sizes, you're actually going to kind of take your finger and kind of help that pop upwards so that there's room for those beads to sit inside. And it won't be super noticeable until then you kind of come and start bringing in that, those smaller beads on the back end. And that's when it'll really start cinching up and pushing that all upward. So the reason I just mentioned that is because it's very important not to try to just flatten this out. It's not going to work. We have to and want to have these beads pop upward. So you, that's how you're going to um, follow this, wor this word pattern over and over again. So you, it's, it's, the repeat is, there's 23 rows here. And then you, row 24 is repeat from row 4. So then you go back to row 4 and repeat all of these rows again. And then go back to row 4 and repeat all of these rows again. Now let me show you also then on the back of the shorthand page that there's some tips. You can kind of get, figure out where you're starting and ending your diamonds and your outside half diamonds. There are going to be seven delicas, actually here's my little arrows, seven delicas between where those little half diamonds start and end on the outside. So periodically stop and look to make sure that you've got those seven between there to make sure that you're doing the right number of rows. Then there's also going to be two delicas between where the center uh, diamond starts and ends and that center, uh, just this one little seed bead accent between the diamonds. So there's two delicas before it and two delicas after it, and then it starts going into your size 11s and the start of your diamond points. So those are two ways for you to kind of stop and take a look periodically and make sure that you're doing the right rows and that everything's uh, lining up properly for you. So that's it. It's just uh, looking at it a little differently, holding it a little differently, and learning to follow the row by row on a written uh, pattern. And, and what ends up happening is you end up with this really cool three-dimensional bracelet. So I hope that helps you out. We've got kits and patterns available for this project on my website at jillwisemandesigns.com. And uh, I love to see what you work on. So you can find me on Instagram. You can find me on Twitter. You can find me on Facebook. I'm everywhere. So there's links to all of that there in the profile. And uh, be sure and tag me and so I can see what you're working on. I love to see it. Happy beating.